Hey guys, welcome to the Viewbook channel where we cover a wide range of topics in the photo and video space. And in this video, I am gonna help you decide what camera is right for you. The holidays are right around the corner and chances are you may be looking at purchasing a camera. And hopefully at the end of this video, the tips and ideas that I give you will help you make that decision for exactly what you will be shooting. Which leads me into the first point or the first thing you do wanna think about when considering what camera to purchase for you personally. Now the first thing you wanna ask yourself is what do you plan to photograph? There are quite a lot of categories, things like portraits, landscape, action, sports, uh, real estate, I mean, the list goes on and on. And believe it or not, a lot of different cameras can cater to that specific niche. So for example, sports or action uh, photography. There are some cameras out there that have a high burst uh, rate or uh, an FPS, frames per second as we call it. And essentially what that means is how many frames a second or how many pictures a second that camera will take. And obviously the higher the amount, the better because it allows you to really pick the best image in an action scene that's happening really, really quick. That's just one example. Another popular example could be something like event photography or wedding photography, where generally something you would be looking for in a camera would be very good low light capabilities. And this will help you in way more ways than one, but essentially it's because a lot of these situations in the event and uh, wedding space require your camera to be used in a lower light situation, as opposed to, for example, just shooting outdoors. You have to deal with, uh, being in a venue or you know a reception or things like that where the light could be very, very dim or lack thereof. So that is something that you definitely wanna consider if you are going to be shooting in either event or wedding photography or something like that, where you're going to be caught in a lot of situations where there's not gonna be a lot of light. Now the next thing that I wanna talk about is the different types of cameras that are on the market right now. And I'm gonna go ahead and give you some other examples and how one could be better than the other in certain situations situations just to kind of guide you and help you understand what might work for yours versus what might work for somebody else's uh, area of expertise. So to start off kind of at the top, you have DSLRs. These are those bigger cameras that you generally see a lot of professionals use. These feature an interchangeable lens, which means you can swap out the lens for different things catered to specifically to what you're shooting. These were very, very popular and slowly dwindling in popularity because a newer type of system has come out, which is called mirrorless. Mirrorless basically is a smaller compact body, um, camera body that is, and still features interchangeable lenses, but the technology is just a little bit more advanced in certain aspects and can pretty much give you all the same qualities and features of that bigger professional body, just in a smaller, more compact size. This is actually something I use, what I'm using right now to film this video on actually. Um, I use the Fuji system, which is a mirrorless compact camera system, something that I truly enjoy. And just to kind of give you an example, the reason why I decided to go with this over the DSLRs is because I travel a lot and having two DSLR bodies with me really does add a lot of weight. And I would love any way possible to cut down the weight and just the size of my gear overall. And so mirrorless worked out extremely well for me because I was still able to retain a lot of those pro level qualities while basically bringing my kit size significantly smaller and lighter, which helps out my back a lot, believe it or not, especially when you're shooting weddings, having two huge cameras on you, oh man, it's a lot. But that's one of the reasons why I love the mirrorless system. And then beyond that, you have your more compact system, which are generally called your point and shoot cameras. Now these have gotten extremely advanced However, they do not offer an interchangeable lens system. They usually have a fixed focal length, a prime, if you will, a prime lens, which means that it's a one focal length and doesn't have any zoom, and or you have a zoom lens on the uh, camera itself. These are really, really good if you are not really looking for some crazy high-end features, but still want 
a compact system that you can maybe carry in your pocket and kind of pull out and have fun whenever you see fit. And now going a step below that tier essentially is going to be your action cameras, more commonly known as like GoPros for example. They are small, they have a fixed lens, you're pretty limited on what you can do with them, but it is still an option and they serve a very specific purpose. You know, to really get you some like really cool POV shots for example, because they are so small, you can mount them in different areas that you wouldn't be able to mount a larger camera body. And then another type of camera that everybody has now is your phone. Now these can be extremely powerful, especially when utilizing different lens attachments. There are a few companies out there that allow you to mount different lenses to it to maybe give you a tighter, more telephoto look to the image or a wider look, that type of thing. I've seen people do some really amazing things with mobile photography and I think the phones are just getting even more advanced at this point where it actually is a very capable camera. However, there is still a large gap, in my opinion at least, between a, a mobile device and a pro level body and the image quality and depth of field that you can get between the two. That goes without saying, a camera is only as good as the person behind it. I've seen people capture amazing images on both platforms, but I just wanted to bring that to your attention because you do have the flexibility on a mobile phone to attach other lenses to widen the range of photography quality that you can get from a mobile device like a phone. And guys, that is gonna wrap up this video. I hope that in some of the examples I gave you, it's gonna be a little bit easier for you to determine exactly what camera is right for you. If you have any other questions, I know this could be kind of a daunting topic, go ahead and leave it down below and I'll try my best to answer them. And if you enjoyed this video, please be sure to give it a thumbs up. It really does help the channel continue to grow. And with that said, thanks for watching and I will see you all in the next one.